Hello and welcome to my channel, Making Crafts. I'm back with my pocket sample or pocket idea journal. And if you've missed this before, I have a couple of videos out where I have started making pockets. And what I'm doing is I'm just making up pockets. Some of them I make up on my own. Some of them I've seen before. But so that I have a idea journal that I can flip through and see, you know, what kind of pockets I want to create. And I don't have to stay with this size. It's just that I might have small ones in here, but I can make this larger for a larger journal. So what I've done in this journal also, as I'm doing the pockets, I'm labeling them with which videos. So even I forget how I make certain things. So I thought it'd be easier just to label the video so I could go back and watch the video later in case I forget. So I'm putting my channel name and the video and pocket number. And the reason I put my channel name was because maybe later on I will, um, I might do ideas from other people's channels and write it down as well. So I'm just putting making crafts video pocket number one, and then I have video pocket number two. So this is pocket number one. There's all kinds of spots to tuck things in. And then I went over here and I put in pocket number two. And it's just been a while since I've worked on this because this summer I had planned on working on it and Life just got in the way. Different things happened, and so it got in the way. So there's another pocket. So that's my pocket number two video. So I'll know to look at the pocket sample journal uh, playlist and look at pocket number two if I want to make that one. So that's how I'm doing this one. And this journal I created, I had a just a box full of scraps. And so I sat down one day, pulled out my scraps, and made myself a small little journal. I didn't know what I was going to use it for. I probably would have made the pages wider had I known I was going to make it for my pocket journal. But I just made this with scraps I had in a bin, and I really love how it turned out. And then I just cinched it together with my um, cinch. So my idea now, though, is for pocket number three, which is today, I'm going to show you different ways to create it using, so it'll be the same pocket, but with different papers, if that makes sense. So I'm going to show you like with digitals and with book pages and with cardstock. And I'm actually gonna use cardstock that's double-sided, but I'm going to use cardstock stock that's one-sided as well because I know we all have a variety of papers. So let me show you here. So for my book pages, I've chosen today, um, I think I'm gonna use just like a music sheet here. So I'll set these aside. I've just got extra papers pulled out. And then I have a digital here from chapter one papers, I think. And I'm thinking this one will be the one I use of theirs today for this pocket. And then I have just some scrapbook paper here, I'm trying to decide. I think I'll take this one. No, let me see. Maybe I'll use this one to make the pocket. And that's double-sided paper. And then I have some Christmas paper because I thought, why not make up one for my Christmas journal I'm working on? And I'm gonna have to show you the Christmas journal that I've been working on. I haven't been filming that one, but I might film, um, make another one and film it. But I've been creating it with a friend, but I'll show you that in another video. So I thought I would choose one of these to create with it today. And I'm thinking I'm going to use this piece. And so this is my paper that's just print on one side and then it's white on the other side. So if you buy a lot of paper from Michaels, um, I think Hobby Lobby, their papers well, some of their papers are not double-sided. So I wanted to show you that you can use those. And then here, we have more double-sided cardstock here, but since I've already got one, I may not use these. We'll have to see. So I'm just gonna set that aside. I just pulled out some papers so I'd have some to work with. So let's start out first though with our book page. And so today we're going to be creating a belly band pocket. And this pocket was just created because I was sitting and playing with my paper and really just folding and came up with this. And so I thought it would be a fun little idea to make a pocket with it. So first off, I want to, if you're already working on a journal, then you're probably going to want to cut it down to the height of your journal pages that you're going to put it on. So for example, um, I guess I could use this one in this journal here. So for example, let's decide maybe I want to make a pocket journal, I mean, a belly band pocket. That's going to be hard to say. A belly band pocket for maybe this page. Let's see what this looks like. On, that might look good on that page. So let's do that. So what is the width of this page? You just, not width, excuse me. You need to know the height of the page. So the height of this page is seven and, about seven and a half. So if you're going to be making these ahead, then you just want to make it the height that your average book journal pages are. And most of mine are about seven and a half or seven and three quarters. So 
that's about a good size to do. You could always trim it down, I think. Um, maybe, we'll see how this looks. Let's see if you can. So we can use our paper trimmer or we can just tear with a ruler. I think with the book page one, I'm going to tear with the ruler. And then with the cardstock, I will tear, I mean, I will cut with the, the paper trimmer. So let's see here. I think I want to start out, I do want it to be seven inches tall. So let's just go here and measure about seven inches, seven, what did I say, seven and a quarter? Hopefully that's what it was. If not, it's no big deal. We'll do seven and a quarter. And let's just line our ruler up. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I know you can't see the numbers on the bottom here, but this is, I'm at seven and one quarter. And I'm just putting my ruler here and I'm just gonna tear it. And you do wanna keep in mind the orientation of your paper. So I'm tearing it, I've laid it sideways to tear it, but this is actually going to be the top of my belly. This right here is gonna be the top of my belly band. I'll show you in just a second. I don't want to confuse you. So now this is the top of my belly band. So now I want to decide how wide I want it. And I think I want my belly band to be about, and I know I'm going fast, but I'm going to be making several of these with you. So if you miss it on this one, don't worry. It's okay. I will come back around because I'm going to be using cardstock and other pages to make them. So I am kind of going fast, but hopefully this makes sense. So I want to decide how wide I want my belly band. So my belly band, I'm going to make this one since the, about two and a quarter because it's a very thin page that I'm doing. It's about one, two and a quarter here. So now what I want to do is I want to start at that two and a quarter mark and I just want to tear all the way down to this corner. But I, so when I tear down this corner, I don't want to go all the way to the corner. I'm just going to leave about a quarter of an inch or less, maybe an eighth of an inch. Doesn't have to be exact. This, I'm just giving you measurements in case you need an idea, but doesn't have to be exact. So then I'm just going to tear my paper down. And there we have just like a sort of a triangle, but that's not, okay? So this is the top of our belly band. This is the bottom. So then what I'm going to do is right where, you can see right here where my two and a quarter ends and this begins, I'm just going to fold over to that point. I'm just gonna fold my paper over and just press it. That's why I said you really don't have to measure. This can work just fine. Just doing it however you know what you want, just so that it fits your pages, all the measurements that you need. So then I'm just gonna fold back. So I fold it over here. So then I'm just gonna bring this one back so that it's up against the edge of my paper. And I'm just gonna fold it over. And then I'm just gonna take this little flap and just fold it behind there. And that one you can just glue down or snip off whatever you wanna do. And so we have a pocket here. And let me see if I can find something to stick in my pocket so I can show you as we go along. I'm looking, I don't really have anything small enough for this one. So what you'll have is you'll, let me see if I can find some, hold on. So you would have a pocket here to stick something in this. Is my lighting okay? Yeah. And then you have a longer pocket here. And so this is your belly band pocket. And we'll keep, let's glue it and then I will show you, we'll put it on the page. Okay, I'm gonna adjust the, I adjusted the lighting better so maybe you can see. So I'm gonna show you again the pockets because I think the lighting was washing the pocket out. But you have a pocket here that you stick it down in and then a longer pocket here. So sorry for repeating it, but just in case, because when I look back over, I have a, I actually have a screen that I can see what's being filmed on my camera. And when I look over on the screen, it looked like it was really washed out. So I wanna make sure you could see it. So then what we're gonna do to glue it is we're just going to come, you wanna open up the first fold that we had and we're going to glue it. Now you have options. You can glue it down the side. So you would glue it down this side and across the bottom. That's gonna make you a very narrow pocket. And I think that's how I'm gonna do it since this is gonna be a belly band pocket. Now, if you wanna put this on the side of the page, I think I would leave this all the way open and just glue the bottom so you could tuck things in there. So we're just going to glue. So these pockets, even though this is a belly band pocket, there is options. You could use this on the side of a page, um, use it different ways. But let's just glue down the side here and then across the bottom. 
and then we're going to just glue it. And I'm hoping the light, I know I keep talking about the lighting, but I hope it's okay today. It's very rainy outside here, so I'm afraid that it's kind of getting washed out by my lights. So right here where we folded this little piece back, let's open it back up. And like I said, you could cut that off and then glue, or you can just fold it over like I'm doing. So we do have to make a decision though here. When I'm folding it back, do I, um, I this is just gonna be a tuck spot there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add glue along the fold here or along that edge and along the bottom. And then I'm just going to flip that around to the back and I can just glue that down on the back or I could just cut it off if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna, I think that will, since this is a book page, it will take and um, strengthen up the corner there. So there we have our pockets and this can go on our journal page. So let's do that one first and then I'll show you with other types of paper in different sizes because when you do different sizes, it each time it will come out a little bit different as far as this bottom point. Sometimes the bottom point will come and it'll end right here and I'll show you. Here's a sample that I made before I started filming on a smaller version. So it really varies and it varies on which way you start to fold your paper as to which direction your pockets go. But you can see here the corner ends there. But with this one where I made it, you could trim this one off. If you made them in advance and did them like this, then you could just trim it off if your page is, if it's too big for your page. Now, did I not see, maybe I, I may have to put a different page because I did not measure that page correctly, but that's okay. If we can't find a page, then we'll figure out what to do. I think it'd be good for that one or, so I think I just, some of these pages are too narrow to be, um, maybe we put it in here. Mm, no, I don't think I want to cover it up. So let's just see. I think I had made it for, I got to talking, so I forgot. I think it was made for this page. And you can see it's kind of wide for this page, and you would just tuck it in, stuff through there. Um, I did make it a little too short because I measured, I guess it must have been seven and a half. So you got to pay attention to your measurements and don't be like me and get to talking and um, lose your measurements. So we could just find another page and see if it fits. I'm trying to decide if I want to or not. Or we can make it work. Here we go. So it fits on that one and we'll just trim off the edge there. So you can see here we need to trim off about... I think I'll trim it from the top. We need to trim off about, looks like, what, a quarter of an inch? Let's just try it and see. I think I can do it with, with my tearing ruler. I probably should take a pair of scissors or something, but let's just try and see. Because like I said, this is just my sample journal, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And there we have our belly band. And so we could decorate this up too. You could add flowers and different things. But for now, since this is just our sample, I'm not gonna decorate this one, but we'll look at the other ones and see. So then when you put it in, you just glue it at the top and at the bottom, which I said that backwards. I was gluing the bottom instead of the top and vice versa, but that's okay. So then we'd add it there and then we could tuck, tuck something in there. So that is that one. And we probably wanna go ahead and label this one. I, or I may just come back. Let's make some more pockets and then I'll come back and label this one and stick the little card in it. Like I was doing for these, I'll stick a little something in it so I know which video. And so this one is video number three. But let me go over here. Okay, so I haven't tried it with cardstock yet, so I'm gonna try that. And the book that I'm creating, the journal that I'm creating that I'm gonna use this paper in, it measures five inches, five and a half inches tall by four inches wide. So I wanna be sure that I make this five and a half inches tall. So I'm just going to cut my paper down to five and a half inches. So it'll be the height of the page. I might just go a sn snip, just a little bit, just a little bit um, over, maybe an eighth of an inch over so that I can trim a little off if it's too short. I mean, yeah, make it too tall instead of too short. Maybe that's how I should say it. And so it won't be too short. I'm gonna make it five. Since my page is five and a half, I'm gonna go just a little smidget over. And that away, let me see if I can get it where you can see the numbers. That away, if I could just trim a little off to make it fit, and I don't have to worry about it being exact. So I'm just gonna cut it down to about five and a half but, or, or so. And then I want it to be two inches wide. So I'm just gonna use this um, 
trim the board here. I'm just going to put it on two inches, and then I'm just going to mark right here where two inches would be on this paper. So you can see it right there. It's very small. So then I'm just going to put that marking on my the corner of my trimmer. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if I... No, the light's not going to help you see it. So the corner of my trimmer, and then I'm going to put the page so that I have about a quarter of an inch down here. So hopefully that makes sense. It's just the same way we did it when we tore it, but instead we're just cutting it with the um, paper trimmer. So there we go. And I didn't quite get it my mark, but that's okay. So now we have, so this piece was um, eight inches wide, and then we got the height for my little bitty book. So I'm making a little bitty book. So you have to decide now, you could turn it over and fold this direction. And I gotta decide if that's how I want. I want to fold it this direction again because I want this to be um, my long piece, and you'll see in a second what I'm, because I don't want this to be on the front. So I'm just gonna fold it all the way over till I get to my two inch line there where I cut, started my two inch, marked my two inch line. And since I didn't cut over to that, I can just use that as my guide. And I'm just gonna fold over to my two inch marking. There we go. And then I'm just going to fold back. Right, so when I fold back, I'm just lining this up against the edge there. I just want it to match the edge. And then you could, may have enough if you wanted to fold back that way, but I don't. I just wanna flip this back around out of my way. And so there we have another little, oh, my camera's washing it out. Should we put it right here, so I can put it right there. We have another little belly band pocket. So let's just glue this together. And you could put like a little decoration here or a word. You know, you could put words here or decoration. And then we could, um, you could decorate it this way, or you could just use it like it is because it is very pretty paper. So now let's just glue it together. And then I'll show you one using, um, so for this one, I am gonna glue, just glue down the edge here and then across the bottom and then fold it over. Lining the edge and the bottom up. And I apologize for the lighting changing. I'm telling you it's raining and it's just so dreary outside that it, I'm having trouble with my lighting today. So then I'm just going to glue this around the back. Oops, gotta open this up, I forgot. We wanna glue along the bottom here. And then we'll just flip it over and then glue, glue this little flap back. Or we can just turn that, you could cut that flap off if you wanted. But there we have our um, belly band pocket. I can't show you on that page because I don't wanna show that journal yet. I will be working on it. It's gonna be a while, so I don't want to, um, Get anybody's hopes up because I, I feel bad when I talk about a journal I'm gonna make and then it takes me a long time because I feel bad that you're waiting on it. So I'm not gonna show that one yet. So here we have, and then you've got these little cutoffs and you can definitely use these in your journals. This could be a pocket or you know, you can turn this into something else. So don't trash it. So like the book page, I had this and I could use this and as a, um, I could fold the edge down and create a pocket with it as well. So we have our pocket here that will go in our other little journal. So these are small ones. So now let's take our Christmas paper that is, you know, white on one side and Christmas on the other. Now this is from a Michaels paper pack. So I'm gonna have to trim off that edge there. Okay, so now for this, for most of my journals, they do measure um, seven and a half inches tall or seven and three quarters. So I've got to think about this. I might just pause and go measure the journal I'm working on and um, see what the height of it is because I want to put this one in that one. So let me show you a sneak peek of the journal I'm working on. So I'm working on a golden book, The Night Before Christmas, and I'm this one is a cinched one. And um, I will show you this in another video. This is the one a friend of mine are working on. She has one. She's working on and I'm working on this. We're working together. We're putting different papers in it, but kind of the same pockets and things. And we're having fun working together on it. So this one I'm not filming, but I will um, do a flip through of it in another video. And I'm thinking about creating one uh, on my channel. Let me know below if you are interested in me creating um, a golden book Christmas journal. And let me know, would you rather see it as the cinch style or would you rather see me make a... Um, like a normal book binding for it, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like sewn in signatures, yeah. So yeah, just let me know below if you'd be interested in that. Okay, so I'm gonna make this one for this journal. 
And I guess I've got different size pages in this journal, so I've got to figure out where I'm going to put it. Most of my pages, so my largest pages measure, let's see here, about eight inches tall. So I'll just make an eight inch one and we'll find one of those pages to put it on. Okay, so I want to start out by cutting down my paper to eight inches tall. So I'm just going to cut it down. And I'm not going to show the cover of this one because I don't know the name of it. But this one was bought several years ago, this paper pack. So I know that, you know, Michaels goes through their um, paper packs so, their different prints so quickly that you can't buy them from one year to another. And I think this one might have been bought in 2021 or maybe 2020 even. So there's no use in showing it because they you won't be able to find it. Okay, so this one I'm going to make my... Um, my belly band about two and a quarter inches wide. So I'm just gonna mark right here at two and a quarter. And oops, I, you can't even see me, can you? Okay, so I'm just using, I'm using my, um, my cutting, uh, my trimmer to mark my two and a quarter. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting it on two and a quarter inches over here. So I'm just putting on two and a quarter inches at the top here, the edge is, and then I'm just marking at the very edge where it would cut it so that I know that it's two and a quarter. Now I'm not gonna cut there because what I need to do now is um, I'm going to cut this down. So it's two and a quarter inches. So I think I'll cut this down to eight inches wide as well so that I have enough paper to do this. So let's do eight inches just in case so we make sure we have enough paper. So now it's eight inches tall and eight inches wide. And then I have my marking at two inches, which I do not see now. At two and a quarter. Oh, okay. So I didn't see it. I'm going to mark it again. It's right here in this flower. So I've got my marking at two and a quarter. So then what I'm going to do is take my marking and put it against my cutting guide here where my trimmer is going to cut through. And then I'm going to bring the bottom edge right here down to, I, I'm just going to eyeball about a quarter of an inch. It does not have to be exact, just eyeball it. Now you do want to cut around your two inch mark there, but the bottom does not have to be exact because most of the time we're going to fold it over. On some of your papers, if they're not quite wide enough, then you won't be folding it over because it, the, it'll show, but that's, you just want a little piece like that to show. So now we have our um, decorated side and then our white sides. So we have to decide what we want showing. And so what I want to do is I want to have it end up with the decoration showing on the outside. But what I thought was, since it's white, one thing you could do is you could go through and stencil or stamp it. But to keep it simple today, I'm just going to turn it into like a piece of lace. So I'm just going to take and punch the edge. You could tear the edge to add some uh, design to it. You could do different things, but I think punching it with this little edge punch is a lot of fun and it makes it have like a lacy look to it. So that's what I'm trying to do. Let me get my paper lined up in here. It's hard to do this on camera because I um, can't put my head in the camera and I need to lean over it to see, but I don't want to block you all with my big old head. So I'm going to try to do it from the side here. Hopefully it'll line up right. And this is just an old punch that I have, a Martha Stewart punch. I don't know that they still make these punches, but you can find edge punches in different brands and things. So, and you can, I'm sure there's all kinds of new things out now. This one's just very old. So I'm just gonna move all the other way. Oops, it got stuck in some glue. Oh, well, I guess we'll be looking at those dots for a while till I have time to stop and wipe them off. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just fold back, you know, next to our, two inch mark. And so I'm just gonna do like that. And I did punch it all the way up, but that's okay because we can just have a little lacy edge there. And you wanna line your bottom up too so it's not folded crooked because I'm always folding crooked. Crooked, I'm just crooked, I guess. Holding my head, so oops, that one's not far enough over. Like I said, you could score this. For some reason, I just don't take the time to score it. So just fold it over like that. And just. Smooth it down, getting it straight. And then we're just gonna fold this back like this. Again. Again, we're just lining the edge up, the fold with the edge. There we go. And then just fold this little piece behind there. And there we have our 
little belly band. And so that kind of gives it like a lacy look so that the plain paper is not so plain. But you could come in and you could stamp this. You know, you could put like um, some labels on it that says Merry Christmas or anything like that. Now, I'm not going to decorate it today, but when I add it to my journal, if I decide to decorate it, I will. I got my fold just a little crooked. Let me see if I can straighten that up just a little bit. It's not that big a deal because we're going to glue this down anyway, so nobody's going to see from the back side. But I was just trying to get it straight a little bit. And scoring it would make it probably a little bit more straight, but I think it's fun just to fold it. So now we're just going to glue. See that where I got that crooked? Let me line that up again. I'm just having trouble today. I know what it is. This paper has a little bit of, I don't know if you can see it, like, what do you call this, like a glitter? And it's texture. Oops, I probably can't see on the camera. Let me see if I can tap the camera so you can see. So you see it's got like a little texture and glitter. So when I'm trying to fold over that, it's not wanting me to. So scoring might have been better for that. Let's make zoom back in. Okay. But I'm just going to take my fingernail and get that pressed down good. So what we want to do, once again, is just glue across. So we're going to glue down the side and glue across the bottom. I'm not really crazy about glitter on cardstock, except when, um, like for Christmas. I love it on Christmas things and holiday things. So now we're just going to open this one up and we're going to glue along the bottom. And then I am going to glue that little tab shut. I'm not cutting my tabs off. I'm just using it to reinforce some. I think that helps just reinforce the edge. And hopefully you don't have as much trouble folding as I do. I'm having a little issue today, but I do like how that turned out. I think that's going to be pretty in the journal. And I might get pull up a page and show you what it would look like on the page. I'm not sure which page I'm going to put it on, so don't hold me to this page. But let me see if I can find a piece, a page that... So maybe it could go like on this page, like that. I kind of like that. Or it might be a way to decorate up. So I'm using some white pages in this, so I still have to decorate this page. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet but um, I think I like it better so far on this page. So I think it'd be pretty, and then you just glue it on, and then you have your spot. And then, I don't know if I mentioned, I keep saying you glue it on as a belly band, but then you have your pocket here in your belly band and a pocket here for a long tag. So you'll make a long skinny tag, and we, we um, so your tag, you wanna make it a little smaller. So if this is two inches, what do we say, two and a quarter wide? We might wanna make our tag about one and three quarters so it slides in and out good. So just keep that in mind. You're gonna to wanna to make your tag narrow, but it's also gonna be holding big journaling cards in here as well. So I thought that's, that's kinda of cute. I like that. Okay, so if you're not getting tired, and if you are, I understand, but I thought it would be fun to do one with the digital. And I'm trying to remember if this is the digital because it does have white on the back. I think I had a different digital for this one. Let me see if I have one that's printed on both sides. Here's one that's printed on both sides. And this is, like I said, from chapter one. I don't remember the name of the kit, but it's a gorgeous kit. So it measures my page. Once I cut my white off my edges, my page measures about eight and a quarter. So I think I'm going to leave it at that height. And then if I need to trim it down, I can when I, you know, add it to the journal. And so for this one, let's make it two and a quarter inches wide as well. And for this one, do I want to cut it or do I want to tear it? I'm thinking I want to tear it. Let's just tear it. It's just a digital. If I mess up, I can always go and I can um, print me another one. Okay, first off, though, I want to, I'm going to tear it down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight inches. I had to count that again. So I'm going to cut, tear it down to eight inches wide because we don't need this extra bit here. And we can use this somewhere else in the journal. So then I'm going to take, and I've got one, two, and a quarter. So I'm just going to put my ruler at that quarter mark. And then I'm going to put the bottom of the ruler down here. So I'll have about a quarter of an inch, maybe, maybe a little bit less, a little bit more. That's no big deal. And then I'm just going to tear it at an angle. And then I can ink this up, but let's just wait till we get through folding it. So now for this one, do we want to fold it? 
because I haven't showed you one this direction. But you really just have to look at your paper and see, um, you know, how you like it. Let's try it this direction. Like I said, it's a digital, so I can print another one out. So I'm coming right over at my two inch, two and a quarter inch mark, and I'm just gonna fold. And then I'm just gonna fold back again. So this one I'm gonna fold. And remember again, we're just matching that edge up. This is very simple. Okay, oops, but except for me, folding straight is not always simple. So let's see here, there we go. And then we can fold this across the back. So that is one way to fold this one, but I still gotta get my paper straight. Because if you don't have your paper straight, it's not gonna look right at the bottom. You're gonna be able to tell. So here we have that. Now I'm trying to decide if I, you know, you can decide to change it and just come back and fold it like this and then like this. Which direction do you think is the prettiest? Hmm, this paper is pretty. So let's just, so let's just go back and do it this way again so that it folds over like that. I think that's gonna be pretty. So then what I wanna do before I glue this one is I wanna ink those torn edges. I'm just gonna get a little bit of ink and I don't like inking on camera because I know that you don't wanna watch that, but I really think that the edges on this one need to be inked before we glue it because you know, you've know got that white torn edge and so I just really, and since we are tearing the edges, kinda helps it show you know the, the edge a little bit better. There we go, I like that. And it didn't take long at all. And then I can go around and ink the rest of the edges once I go to put it in my journal. I did miss my little corner right there just a little bit. It's no big deal. This is nothing rocket science or nothing we have to worry about. So, and when you open it up, you may see where you, you were a little crooked to folding, but that's okay. So now we're just going to glue down the side and across the bottom. And then we're gonna fold it over. And then we're just going to glue across the bottom here. Isn't that beautiful paper? So we're gonna glue across the bottom here and then just glue this tab a little bit. And I got this paper when it first came out, but I just hadn't made a journal with it. So I thought it'd be fun to work with to make some different pockets and belly bands and things. So now maybe in another video, I'll come back and we'll decorate these up because you could put a flower here and different things. But I didn't prep for that and I don't wanna go digging around right now. But let me just show you the ones we made. So we made it with double-sided paper, being cardstock. We've made it with double-sided, I mean, one-sided cardstock. This is with the digital, and I don't know if I told you, but this is on, feels like copy paper. I can't remember, but this feels like copy paper. Sometimes I print mine on copy, and sometimes I print them on premium, 32-pound uh, um, paper. But I think this is copy paper. So that's what that version is. And then we have a book page version, which is in here somewhere. Do you remember where I put it? I do not. That's how quickly I forget things. Well, let's see. I'm thinking if you put it on a book page. Oh, here it is, here it is. So here it is. I did get a little glue on there. So there it is. And so, you know, we have it and put things in your pocket. And I guess I need to make a little label to go in that pocket that says, I'll just use a post-it note that's put my channel name. Video number three. I should put pocket video number three. And then I'll know to look up on my, um, playlist and see the one that's labeled pocket number three and then I'm just going to stick that in there so I'll know and I might make something better for it later on but that way I don't forget because once I turn the camera off I'll totally forget so let me know below if you um if you make one of these pockets which type of paper are you using and which type of paper are you interested in seeing these pockets made in do you um prefer digitals or book pages I think I'm gonna try, if I have time, for each one to kind of use a variety of papers so you can kind of see the different looks and the different feels of it. Because, you know, as, as you know, with 
The copy paper is going to be a little flimsier, but when you glue it down, I think it'll be fine. Cardstock, it is a lot um, thicker, and you know, I had a little bit more trouble folding the cardstock, so it might have been best to score it. And then this was a thinner cardstock, so it didn't give me as much trouble, but um, thicker cardstock you would need to score. So we have those pockets made, and it's a belly band pocket, but also what I was saying earlier was you could make it um, on a bigger page. This one's too narrow, but if you had a bigger journal page, then you could make it as a side pocket. You know, it could be a pocket here and then um, pockets there and it not be a belly band. And I guess it would work on this one, one of these pages. Let's just see if we can find one wide enough. So yeah, you would just add it to the edge here. And so then you could tuck a little journaling card in there and your other pockets there. So you can use it as a side pocket as well. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed seeing me create these pockets and I hope that it gave you an idea on something to create for your journals or just to sit down and create a bunch of pockets and maybe make your journal later on. And I will be back with more pockets in the upcoming weeks. So I'm sorry it has taken me so long to get back around to it. I'm not sure which day I'm gonna upload these. It's either gonna be like a Thursday or Friday. I'm not sure each week. I'll have to see. But um, I am glad to be back working on my pocket journal. Well, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.